Good afternoon, everybody. Any SPI fans in the house right now? Thank you so much. Hey, if you know who I am, what's my favorite movie? Anybody know? Back to the Future, thank you. So let's go into the DeLorean right now and set the time circuits to 2013, FinCon in St. Louis. Yeah. Some of you are there? Hands up? Yeah, okay. Well, I had the honor of delivering the opening keynote at that event. And an even bigger honor to have PT trust me to pick any topic that I wanted to talk about. And I decided it might, it might be cool to start off a conference talking about first impressions. Because first impressions are obviously very important. They can make or break a long-term relationship you have with your subscribers, your readers, your customer, customers. But then I was like, man, I'm kind of in a hole here because if I'm gonna be presenting about first impressions, man, I really gotta make a good first impression, don't I? And I figured, okay, what's the biggest thing I can do? Well, after the fire marshal said I couldn't bring, bring pyrotechnics, which was literally true. I was going to see if I could do fire coming out of my wrists and all this crazy stuff. He wasn't having it. So I said, what can I do relevant to the content that might make sense? So I decided that I'm going to run up on the stage right in the beginning of the conference, come up the stairs, and <laughs> trip and fall flat on my face. Anybody remember that? Actually, I know you remember that because many of you came up to me today and yesterday and said, Pat, dude, I still remember when you fell flat on your face. And it was kind of cool because the microphone left feedback, which was totally unplanned. People in the front row were like, oh my gosh, Pat, are you okay? But I went on and it was successful because people remember the content in that presentation. But you know what? For me personally, that was another moment during that conference, FinCon 13, that I remember that completely opened my eyes and kind of changed my life and how I felt about you guys. And no, it wasn't when I saw PT riding a mechanical bull, although that did open my eyes. <laughs> and it did change my life in different ways. But no, it was when Derek Halpern gave a keynote talking about promotion and he did a demonstration getting you guys involved and your answer to his question really surprised me. So I'm gonna ask you all the same question to see the answer is the same or different than it was three years ago. So I'm going to ask you, by a, by, by a show of hands, how many of you feel like you spend more time creating content versus promoting content? Raise your hand. Great, thank you. Now, how many of you feel like you spend more time promoting content versus creating content? Much less. Exactly the same. Excuse my language, but why? <laughs> Why is it the same? And I, don't, I don't ask that because I don't think that you're terrible people. I don't ask that to be condescending. I ask that to truly ask the question, why are we so afraid to promote? We spend all this time and effort getting to know who our audience is, delivering all this amazing content on our blog. And as a blogger, I know that the more content you create, yes, the more opportunity there is for stuff to be shared, to be found in Google. But I also know as a blogger that the more stuff you create, and some of you go gangbusters on it, multiple articles a day, the more articles you write, the more likely it is people aren't going to see what you had already written. And it gets put into the archive. And I'm like, why does this happen? And I know because I was a promophobe for the longest time as well. I was afraid of promoting because I was scared. I was scared I was going to upset people. I was scared that I was going to annoy people. But I soon realized that the key to success is being found. You can have the best food at the restaurant that you have, but unless you go out there and serve it, nobody's going to know about it. It just takes that one bite, that one taste to truly be obsessed, almost as, as obsessed as uh, Jeff Rose is with In-N-Out. But he had to know about In-N-Out in the first place before he became obsessed with it. What are you going to do, cook your food and just leave it in the back room? No, you place it on the table in front of where your audience is. You don't stuff it down their throats. I think that's what a lot of people think promotion is. No, it's just advancing your content, letting them have an opportunity to have a taste and bite into it. The three things that you need to succeed in this online world are you need the trust with your audience. And by far, FinCon and your audience, I know that more than any other niche, you have earned that trust. Trust me. You've earned that trust that you've had with your tribe. Some of you have been blogging and writing content for years. You have earned that trust already. You've got that part down. You have to also create content and write about what they desire, what they need, what's going to help them. And you already know who your audience is. Many of you are writing for 
almost like yourself. And you're able to deliver content that is helpful and life-changing to them. But the third component, you have trust, the desire, and you need to promote. And you have to have all three in order to succeed. Because think about it. If you have, uh, or if you're delivering stuff that they desire and you're promoting it, but they don't trust you, what's going to happen? Right? They're not going to trust you. They're not going to transact with you. If you are promoting stuff and you have that trust, but it's not stuff that they need, well, then there's an issue there as well. But if you have that trust, which all of you have, if you have the content that they desire, which all of you have, but you're not promoting it, you're missing that third leg and that element that's actually going to get you exposure. Now, to finish off, I want to tell you a quick story about a man who taught me what it truly meant to share a message with the world. And so we're going to go back in the DeLorean and head back to 2001, UC Berkeley, go Bears, sorry Steve. And we're going to go to my first day of college. So I'm at Unit 3, which is on this side of campus, and I have to go to class on this side of campus. And in order to get from this side of campus to that side of campus, I have to go through this place called Sather Lane in Berkeley, and there's shops along the way. And as I'm going there, I'm wearing all my geeky can uh, cow band gear, because I'm like, yeah, I'm the band, I'm awesome. Cow shirt, cow pants, cow socks, cow boxers, everything. Like, that's how legit it was. So I'm walking, and I start to hear this voice from afar say the same thing over and over and over again. At the, I can hear it at the end of this tunnel. And as I get closer, I start to see a, a figure there, and I see there's this man standing there with a cup. And he's repeating these words, and I'm just thinking to myself, okay, well, I'm just going to, you know, if somebody asks me for money, I'll just walk by, nothing unusual. But it was unusual, because he wasn't sticking his cup in front of everybody's face. He wasn't even asking for money. He had one message, and that message was, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a good day at school. God bless you. God bless you. His name was Dwight. But everybody called him the God bless you man. And everybody on campus loved him. So as I started to see him every single day at the same exact time, God bless you, God bless you. He saw me in all that cow, cow gear. He was like, man, welcome to cow. God bless you. <laughs> then I would start to look for change and drop it in there for him. Every single time I had change, I would look for him. Then after some of my biggest lectures coming out of the halls, there he was again. God bless you. God bless you. If it was, if it was a game week or, or Saturday when we were playing a football game, God bless you, go Bears. God bless you, go Bears. Never, never sticking his hand in front of anybody's faces, but just delivering the same exact message over and over and over again, making people smile along the way. And I soon found out that a number of people before exams would look for Dwight and give him money because they thought it was good luck. <laughs> before they took his test. And I really loved Dwight, I did. And unfortunately, in, in, in the sophomore year of school, I read on the Daily Cal, the headline was local favorite um, died, uh, and he was assaulted. And it was really interesting, because, sorry, um, I just missed hearing that message, you know? And just randomly, for this homeless man, there was a vigil that night on campus. Everybody came out to see him. And again, he just had one message to share, but he believed in it. And he did it for all of our good, to help us have a better day. And the way he did it was he just showed up, and he delivered, and he strategically placed himself exactly where he knew we would all be. He wasn't shoving the cup in our face. He wasn't begging for money. We gave him money because we loved the message. And you have that trust that you have with your audience. You are giving them what they desire. You're making them feel better. So the lesson here that I learned from Dwight that I want to pass on to you is show up. And don't be afraid to share that message again and again if you know it's helpful. The world needs you and your content. They're not going to know you exist until you put it out there and serve them that dish. Thank you very much.